for the guacamole that I'm going to be making today, all you need is, well, the recipe calls for one avocado per person, but I want to eat a lot of guacamole today. And then I'd have one quarter of an onion because I don't want it to be too overwhelming, but you can add as much onion as you want. One full lime, one full lemon, a few slices of nacho cheese, and, or nacho jalapenos, and some garlic powder. So I've already chopped up the onions, and so for the lemon and lime, we're just gonna squeeze those in. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up the uh, nacho jalapenos real quick. We're gonna make them nice and tiny pieces so that they can blend in just fine. They'll be about the same size as the onions, which are finely chopped. But yeah, the one of the reasons that I wanted to make this is one, just because I've been craving guacamole and I'm feeling sick and guacamole is great when you're sick because it's got all kinds of healthy stuff in it. It's got vitamin C, it's got all the vegetables, and because I've been reading this book to my son called Holy Squacamole. Okay. So now I just, I have my bowl, I'm just using a plastic bowl to make sure that it fits. But this picture book, Holy Squacamole, is all about this hen that is making guacamole, and it just really, really, really makes me crave guacamole, like, so much. Okay. There we go. The pit out. Get this disgusting part here out. But, um, so the recipe that I have here is a recipe that I got from a guy at my church during one of the Sundays we were going over somebody's house and they were going to be cooking uh, guacamole and French bread pizza and they said that everybody had to participate in cooking the food if they wanted to eat the food and so my job was cutting the onions that day and this recipe was so good that it is now like my go-to recipe for making guacamole. So. Everything just like it's so easy. You just scoop it all into the bowl, mash it up. I might actually end up make cutting up some more nacho jalapenos because I think I'm gonna want more. I like to use a fork because it makes it kind of chunky, not too smooth. I really, really like that chunkiness. Yeah, you can also add, I've seen people add tomatoes to this. I'm not really a tomato person myself. For guacamole, I love tomatoes and other stuff. But I've seen people add uh, cayenne. I've seen people add chili peppers, all kinds of stuff. Uh, pretty much all the spiciness in my guacamole comes from the jalapeno. Uh, the guy that I got this recipe from, he got the recipe from a guy that was uh, doing a street vendor. I don't remember where. I want to say Utah just because of who the guy was, but it could have been anywhere. And um, the guy showed him how he was making the guacamole that he had. So there is the guac the squashed up avocados. We're going to go ahead and put in some onions. Mix that up. Mix it up more after I get the jalapenos that have been chopped up. And we're gonna squeeze in some lime. I love lime in everything. I like to use it for dressing, I like to use it in my tacos. Definitely like to use it in the guacamole. And I think this might actually only need half of a lime since it's so small. And then squeeze in the lemons. You have to get out that seed. And mostly the citrus juice is just to keep it green, but it also gives it a nice flavor. Get the seed. We don't need a seed. Okay, got the seed. Mix it all up. Remember how much garlic powder he said to use? And I checked the recipe I had written down, and there was no amount, so we'll just put in that much. You can also use minced garlic. So this is Holy Squacamole, which is the book that made me want to make guacamole so much. It is so cute. 
I want to get one of those meat eventually, but I haven't been able to get one. But it's the basic story of, you know, the little hen, the little red hen story, but she's making guacamole this time instead of bread. And she asked the help of this guy, whose name is Kawadi, I think? It's right there, but I don't know how to pronounce that. And of course he says no, and the snake says no, and the armadillo says no, and the iguana says no, and then she ends up making everything anyway, and they all get to try it, because she's really nice, much nicer than I am. And one of my favorite things about this book is that in the back, uh, it has... Uh, the story of guacamole, and then it has the recipe for the guacamole that's in the book, some helpful hints, sorry, a glossary of the terms that are used, and if you go to the story of guacamole, it talks about Japanese-inspired guacamole, French-Italian guacamole, Caribbean guacamole, the holiday in America, which is National Guacamole Day, uh, oh, which is also Mexican Independence Day, which I did not know about, so now I know about that. Uh, mostly I just love that it is so colorful. I read this book to my son all the time and get to have all the funny voices and most of all I love that it makes me want to make guacamole. And so I'm going to go eat this now <laughs> with chips and I hope you guys enjoy it too. And if you guys make any guacamole, let me know what kind of recipe is your favorite. See you guys later. Mm -hmm.